Hey everyone, it's Adam from Anali Media, and today we're not going to actually learn a new lesson. However, we're going to put all the prior lessons we learned into this video and learn how they can all come together in real life and put into a situation. So we're going to create an amortization table which shows how loans are taken out, the amount of interest that are paid on them, and a breakdown of how the payments split between the loan amount and the interest. So to begin, I have a situation where I took out a $65,000 loan. I'm going to pay it out in 60 monthly payments of $1,256.63. And this was calculated with an annual interest rate of 6%, and that was compounded monthly. So again, I'm going to break down this statement into a couple categories to make it easier to understand. So I have a $65,000 loan. My interest rate is 6%. I have 60 payments, and each payment is worth $1,256.63. If we dig down more into the statement, we can see that this interest rate is an annual interest rate. So that's for the year, however, we're paying each month. So I need to break this 6% down to each month. An easy way to do that, if you've ever taken any finance courses, if you've taken a math or any math courses, is because our interest rates compounded monthly and our payments are paid monthly, I can easily just divide the annual interest rate by 12 and that'll get my monthly interest rate. The payment, I feel, feel a little anxious that mm -hmm. this is not exact and it's kind of rounded. So I'm going to actually find the exact number by using a function of the, pay, pay, the payment function. And I'm just going to put some details about the, the interest rate per period, the number of periods, the present value of the loan, the future value, which is zero, and the type, which I don't need one. And it'll give me a negative number because Excel sees it as a negative cash flow or an outflow of cash. However, I need a positive for my situation, and there you go. It's the exact same. However, if we uh, extend the decimal out, we can see it's not the exact. So here you go. I have all my details now. So now all I have to do is fill out the table. So first, I have to number each payment. We're going to do a breakdown of each payment, what happens to the loan, what happens to the interest, and the difference as time goes on. So I first need to number the payments. An easy way to do that is put your starting value, which is one for me. Go to Edit, Fill, Series. You're going to, you're going to put the series in the columns. Keep it linear because we're going to do addition, and my stop value is going to be 60. I press OK, and it's going to fill for me quickly. Um, when you do the table, make sure you always uh, reference them, relative or absolute, to ensure that uh, if any of these details change, your table will change as well. So for my beginning loan, it's all going to be 65000 I can reference that. For the interest, it's going to be the beginning loan, and you're just going to multiply it by the monthly interest rate. And that's the amount of interest this payment costs. Uh, the loan payoff is how much of my payment goes towards paying down the loan. So it's going to be payment, and I'm going to subtract the interest. And then finally, the ending loan is the amount left I still have to pay off. So it's going to be the beginning loan minus the loan payoff. There you go. Now, don't think we're going to fill in all these all these rows, because all we have to do is just fill in row number two, and then you just copy it all down, because it'll work perfectly like that, like how Excel should be. So again, the beginning loan, because it's my second payment, the beginning will be the ending of the first payment, what we call that. The interest will be the beginning loan. I'm going to multiply it by the interest monthly interest rate, and I'm going to make sure it's an absolute reference because the interest rate will never change. So I'm always going to refer to this sum. The loan payoff will be the payment minus the interest. However, again, I'm going to have to absolute reference the payment because, again, it will never change. My ending loan, it's a simple relative reference. Subtract the beginning loan by the payoff, and there you go. And all we have to do is copy this line all the way down to the 60th payment. An easy way to do that is by going up to your cell selector at the top left hand side of your program. You're going to select the top left cell that is in what you want to select. So it's going to be this one, B10. Put a colon, and then you're going to put the bottom right cell that you want to select. And since I know that my amortization table goes all the way to column E, I know it's E. And just by simple common sense, you can find that you can find the row number. So because I have 60 payments and I've already finished two payments, 
all I needed to do is add 58 more payments. So it's to be 10, which is the row I'm at now, plus 58, which is 68. You press enter, then all those rows are selected. And then to finish it, all you have to do is go to edit, fill, series, and just like how we numbered the payments, it's going to be columns. However, all you have to do is press auto fill, press OK, and it's done. All, all your cells are filled. And to know that your amortization table is correct, is that at the bottom right hand corner, or wherever your loan amount is after the payment, if it's zero, that means you've done it right. And there you go. So we can, we can always add up the amount of interest I'm paying, or how much of the loan I'm paying off. And it's a really nice breakdown of how your payments go to interest and how much it goes off to pay off the loan. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something about using Excel outside of just the computer concept, using it in real life. And if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, just put them down in the comments below. Subscribe to my video. I'm Adam from Adelie Media, and I will see you in my next video.